Hey guys, I'm going to walk you through the problem here today for the rocket launch lab. This is going to be for the rocket launch lab. Um, and in the rocket launch lab, you're going to launch a projectile that is going to leave the ground, it's going to go up for a while, and then it's going to come down. And you are going to know how far the thing went, and you're going to know how long it stayed in the air. That's pretty much the only data you can collect with this because it's going to be throwing something. Um, so we're going to know how far it went downfield and how long it stayed in the air. And from that, we are going to figure out its total speed at launch. I'll review what that means in just a moment. You're going to figure out its horizontal speed at launch, its vertical speed at launch, and figure out how high it went. So using our knowledge of projectile motion, we are going to use this information to figure out all of this. And we're going to be doing it with an actual projectile that, that, that you throw. Um, so you're going to have some real data. But this is just some, uh, some numbers that are fairly round so that the math is a little easier to see. So I'm going to walk you through this. Now, it turns out, let's see. First off, let's show this thing. This is the worksheet you worked on last time. This is a projectile. Uh, in this particular example, it was a person throwing a baseball. Uh, it goes up for a while. It comes down for a while. And again, we're saying it goes 90 meters down range, guy's got a good arm, and uh, it takes, it's in the air for six seconds. And this is given on this uh, this worksheet because he throws it, it goes up one, two, three, comes back down four, five, six seconds for the whole trip. So this is where we're coming from. So the first thing we're going to do is figure out the horizontal speed. You might wanna be taking notes on this, by the way, and pausing the video from time to time. Um, so that you don't have to rewatch this when the time comes. So go ahead and pause it when you catch up. So this is for horizontal speed. This is the easiest one. We are going to use speed is equal to distance divided by time. Now remember, when you're talking projectile motion, I still have this thing, horizontal motion is independent of vertical motion. So however fast a thing is moving horizontally, that never changes. The vertical motion does change because gravity is changing as it goes along. But the horizontal motion is always the same. So in this problem, the projectile went 90 meters in six seconds. So this is 90 meters in six seconds. And that comes out to be 15, I believe. 90 divided by six equals 15 meters per second. Okay, so that is the horizontal component of its speed is 15 meters per second when we launched it. Okay, now, to get the total speed, we have to know the horizontal component and the vertical component. So we're gonna have to do this one next. So for the vertical speed, this takes some physics. We actually have to think about what's going on in the real world to be able to uh, know what math to do. So here's, well, actually, I can use this diagram right here. It's in the air for six seconds. So it is, well, it's easier to see in this. When we throw the ball, it goes up for one, two, three seconds, and then it falls down for one, two, three seconds. So it spends half of the time going up and half of the time going down. Now, if we kind of freeze frame it at the, at the apex, at the top of its trajectory, this is just like we drop the ball from the top of our uh, from the top of the trajectory, and then it fell for three seconds. It started here and then falls straight down for three seconds. And the question now is, how fast is it going when it hits the ground? This is a good way to think about it because the speed that is going up is the same as the speed that is coming down. But it's easier to think about if you think about only the part where it's falling down. And if you can figure out how fast it's going when it hits the ground, well, that has to also be how fast it's going when it goes up. Now, there are other ways to solve this, but that's probably the simplest one conceptually. So it falls for three seconds. And the acceleration is equal to G because it's in free fall. We're allowed to use 10 for this one. So the equation we're going to use is speed is equal to acceleration times time. And the special case in this one is V equals GT. So the final speed is equal to 10 times 3 seconds. This is meters per second squared equals 30 meters per second equals the vertical speed. Okay. 
30 meters per second. And this shouldn't be too surprising because in this example problem that you were working with before, it was given that the initial speed was 30 meters per second. So when we work the problem backwards, it's a little reassuring that we get the same vertical speed for the line. So to sum this up, to get the vertical speed, you take half of the time airborne. It was airborne for six seconds. You take half that time because it's spending half the time going up and half the time coming down. And the half of the time that it spent coming down, you use that to figure out how fast it's going when it hits the ground. That's the vertical speed. All right, so for total speed, we're going to do the, uh, we're going to add a couple of vectors. So we have the uh, vertical speed is um, 30 meters per second. That's 30. And then the horizontal component of the speed is 15. And we're just going to Pythagorize. So we're going to wind up with 30 squared plus 15 squared equals 30 squared plus 15 x squared equals. We'll take the square root of that and we get 33.6 meters per second. That's the total speed. So 33.6 by combining those two. That's the total speed. All right, now for the height, how high? Um, we're going to do the same trick that we did for the vertical speed because the ball went up for uh, three seconds and came down for three seconds. So we can treat this as if it is a ball which has fallen for three seconds. We want to know how far the ball falls in three seconds. And for this, we're going to use D equals one half AT squared. And in this case, it's going to be one half times 10 meters per second squared because the acceleration is the acceleration due to gravity. So that's 10 meters per second squared times three seconds. And that quantity is going to be squared. So this comes out to be five times nine equals 45 meters. And that's height. That's the how high. Okay, so for the homework, what I want you to do is to practice this. I want you to apply this to a given problem here where somebody's throwing a football and they, the ball flies 55 meters in 3.1 seconds, and you need to figure out all this stuff. You need to figure out the vertical speed when you threw it, the horizontal speed when it was thrown, and the total speed when it was thrown. And then finally, how high it went. So that's going to be 55 meters in 3.1 seconds, and find all of those uh, items. So that's it. We'll see you next time.